Our CT scanner is used for a number of clinical situations. From the emergency department, uh, we use it a lot when we're doing CT heads and spines, especially after trauma. Um, from our inpatients, we do a lot of chest, abdomen and pelvis CTs, especially for our surgeons preoperatively. Uh, and then for our outpatients, we, I mean, from head to toe, you could have a CT depending on what the pathology is that the physician's looking for. Depending on the type of exam that you're having, the type of CT that you're having, will determine the type of preparation that's required. Uh, for the majority of the exams, there is no preparation required. Um, however, depending on what they're looking for, you may be required to drink uh, what we call x-ray dye. It just helps shows the internal structures a little bit better. Uh, and on some uh, tests, we might have to um, give you x-ray dye intravenously. So we'll inject some contrast intravenously. Um, usually for abdomen and pelvises, there's some fasting that's required, um, but again, for most CTs, there is not a preparation required. So, so the patient can expect a couple of different things to happen when they first come into the room. We're going to have them get changed, obviously, for the exam, so that uh, there's, no, there's nothing metal in and around the area that we're trying to image. Um, depending on the type of exam that they're having, if they are having um, contrast, we will go through a thorough consent with them um, to make sure that they fully understand the test that they're having and they're given an opportunity to ask any questions whatsoever. Uh, the technologist will explain, they're going to lie down on this table, uh, this table is going to lift up and go through the CT scanner. Um, they're in communication with the technologist at all times, there is a communication system so although the tech is behind the window and behind the wall, they can see and hear the patient at all times. Um, they're in there just for a few minutes during their exam. They may or may not have to hold their breath, again, depending on the exam, and then they'll come out of the CT scanner. Welcome to the Yukon Mammography Program. This is our mammography suite here at Whitehorse General Hospital, and we are very fortunate, thanks to Run for Mum, to have this full field digital mammography unit that we've had since 2009. Um, the Yukon Mammography program is uh, for women ages 40 to 74. Um, there's always discussion about women age 40 to 50, whether or not uh, they can come into a screening program. And here in the Yukon, of course, you can come in age 40 to 50. We will actively recruit you, which means we will send you a reminder letter once you turn 50, um, but we will not turn anyone away who wants to come in age 40 to 50 for a screening mammogram. In addition to the screening program, we also do a diagnostic program here as well. Um, so that's for women who are presenting with some type of, of breast symptom that we need to investigate. This modality, uh, mammography, is used in women who um, obviously were looking for any kind of breast abnormalities. Um, we divide the program into two, screening and, and diagnostic. Screening is meant for women who have absolutely no symptoms and no history of any breast disease. Um, diagnostic is for women who do, uh, they, whether or not they have a lump or there's been a, a skin change, uh, for whatever reason they're noticing something um, that they're concerned about, that their physician brings them in for a diagnostic mammogram. So a patient can expect when they're having a mammogram, they're going to come into this room here, which as you can tell is clearly, we've purposefully tried to reduce the clinical uh, feel to it and we really wanted to make it very comfortable for the patient when they arrive. Um, they do have to get changed from the waist up and we have very comfortable mammography shirts for them to wear, again thanks to Run For Mum and their contributions. Um, we do ask women not to wear any deodorant um, because you can see that on the mammography film and it does cover up the anatomy. Um, they'll come into the suite, the technologist will position them. They can expect to have four images done, two of each breast. Um, then the technologist will look at those images to determine if they need to have a few more images taken or whether or not they may need follow-up uh, through ultrasound. What's great about this mammography, uh, digital mammography unit is that it doesn't require as much compression or pressure as you would say on the breast tissue as previous um, analog units would have required. So from a patient experience they can expect they won't have as much compression as maybe they've had done previously in a film environment. It's not to say uh, it's not going to be uncomfortable but it's certainly not a painful exam uh, that everyone thinks that it is. 
Ultrasound is used for a number of, of reasons. Um, one of the main uses of ultrasound here at WGH is obviously for obstetrical ultrasounds. Uh, when a woman is pregnant, there's a couple of scans that are done, depending on how far along she is in the pregnancy, they're done at specific times. And that's just to keep an eye on the fetal anatomy, make sure the fetus is developing normally, uh, and be able to identify if and when there is any abnormalities to be able to address those. Um, there's a number of other reasons that we do ultrasounds, a lot of abdominal and pelvic ultrasounds, and those can range anywhere from oncology screening to just a general pain that a patient has had that uh, they just haven't been able to, to relieve themselves of that pain. The physician may order those. This is our digital x-ray suite here at Whitehorse General Hospital. Uh, this room is used for doing all of our general x-rays uh, and is the trauma suite. So when patients do come over from the emergency department, we do all their x-ray work up here in this room. Um, patients, we do anything from checking for broken bones, arthritis, uh, to inside looking for chest infections, abnormalities of the abdomen and pelvis, um, a wide range of general radiographies done here in this room. So depending on what type of exam the patient is having done, they may or may not need to be changed, uh, change their clothes for this exam. Um, often if it's an extremity, they won't require to be changed into a gown. However, if we're doing a chest x-ray or an abdomen x-ray, then they will need to get changed. Um, we come into the room, the patient uh, is positioned in a specific way to get the actual image that's required for that procedure. Uh, the technologist will walk the patient through and give them any breathing instructions they may need uh, and help position them in the spot that they need to get the right image. There's a number of reasons why somebody might have an MRI exam. Uh, depends on what the physician is looking for, what the clinical question is, but MRI is really good at looking at soft tissue structures, so we do a lot for uh, tendons and ligaments and tendons and soft tissue injuries. Um, it is excellent for visualization of the brain and spinal cord as well, so we'll do, uh, we anticipate we'll be doing quite a bit of brains and spines, as well as um, your internal structures, like your internal organs. Uh, it's really good at looking at those kind of different differentiating those soft tissues. When you're coming in for an MR, we're going to ask you a number of screening questions. We want to make sure that it is safe for you to come in, so we want to know if you have any kind of implants, any kind of magnetic or electronic um, equipment in or on you. Um, those kinds of things are really important to know. To prepare for an MRI exam, it depends on the type of MRI exam that you're having. For most MR exams, there actually isn't very much preparation that the patient has to go through, um, but if we're looking at anything in the abdomen, there could be some fasting instructions. So we're going to let you know as a patient what you need to do, but by and large, the majority, uh, there's not a lot of patient preparation required for your exam. Patients can expect when they come in for their exam, they're going to be here for a little while. So first and foremost, they're going to get greeted by our very friendly staff. We're going to go through another screening process with them. Um, they're going to fill out another screening form. It's going to feel like we're asking them the same questions over and over again, and we are <laughs> at a lot of times. Uh, we are going to get them changed into a hospital gown and or pajama bottoms, uh, depending on the anatomy that we're looking at. Um, and once they've finished their form, uh, then they're going to come in, the MRI technologist is going to do a second or third step screening process uh, before they come into the MR suite. Uh, once they're in here, uh, they're going to be laying down on our table, uh, looking at our ceiling diversion, uh, the beautiful picture of the Northern Lights over to Moose Lake. Um, and they're going to expect to hear some really loud banging noises. That's part of how the MRI works. So we're going to protect their ears as much as possible, give them some music and some shielding for their ears. But it is a very loud exam. There's no way around that. Um, they can be, depending on the exam that they're having, they can expect to be on that scanner anywhere from 20 minutes to over an hour. So um, we are going to prepare them as much as possible to let them know. But uh, there's an, those are some of the things they can expect when they come into the MR suite.